Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of our Age of Empires 4, the Mongol Empires campaign, as we continue with the Battle of the Song Fortress in 1267. Now we have shifted our sights back to China after our Eastern campaign uh, in Europe, and from the dates, I'm fairly certain that uh, the Song Fortress, the dynasty of Song, and the fortress mentioned here, is also the city of Xiangyang. Uh, the entirety uh, of the siege took from 1267 to 1273. It took six years for the Mongol forces to force the city of Xiangyang to surrender. Uh, they were never able to breach the gates of Xiangyang. It's a very unique city uh, in Chinese history in terms of its geography. A very hard city to take, as demonstrated even in the Three Kingdoms period, as many uh, of my subscribers might know since I have done a fair amount of Three Kingdom content, and not only is it the seat of power for the Jin province, uh, for Liu Bao's faction, for a long time, it's also where Guan Yu uh, made his famous attack on uh, the Kingdom of Wei uh, in the later periods of his life, and the famous flooding of Fun Castle. Um, Fun Castle might sound like a different name, but really, Fun Castle or Fan Cheng uh, is a sister city of Xiangyang. Uh, the city of Xiangyang is built right on the southern banks of the Han River. Uh, the Han River is the river that gives its name to the Han Dynasty. It flows out from the Hanzhong regions, from the Qinlin uh, Mountains, and flows all the way into the Yangtze Rivers in the south. And it passes through the city of Xiangyang. And it gives Xiangyang a very unique geographic location in terms of uh, setting it up for a very strong defense throughout the ages. Even as late as uh, World War II, when the Japanese were invading China, Xiangyang was still a very key city in terms of holding down uh, the defense of central and southern China. And if we want to understand how the geography plays and why it takes the Mongol force, which is sort of unbeatable uh, throughout its entire history, uh, six years to siege down the city, uh, we have to just imagine uh, a river, let's say it's running horizontally across here, and to the southern bank we have the city of Xiangyang, uh, built on the southern bank of the city. On the northern bank of the city it's its sister city, Fan Cheng, or Fan Castle, and the river, once it passes the city of Xiangyang, takes a southern turn, and a U-shaped turn, as a U turns around, and hits into a mountain range here, and then flows farther south. So the city of Xiangyang essentially is on a peninsula uh, where the river flows through it, covering about three sides, north, uh, west, or east, sorry, east, um, north, east, and south. And to its west is a huge mountain range and a small plain. But the plain, it's hard to uh, you know, gain access to if you don't control the river. And Fun City, or Fun Castle, on the other side, it's sort of its gatekeeper, a sister city that can help it defend and control the flow of the Han River. And for most historical forces to take this city, especially if you're attacking from the north side, uh, you need to take Fun City first. Without it, you have a very difficult time surrounding a city that is surrounded three side already by a river. And for the Mongol force, it was very difficult for them to actually siege the city because Mongols uh, are not well known for their naval power. So it was very difficult for them to control the flow of traffic on these rivers. So even if they try to surround a city, uh, the walls are very strong, very high, very thick. Uh, in Xiangyang and Fan Cheng, uh, as it has been built and reinforced for, you know, dynasties and dynasties, centuries of defensive structures placed here. Uh, so what they did is they built their own fortresses on the outskirts of uh, both of these sister cities to choke out the city and to develop their naval force. I think from 1267 to 1269, they trained probably 70,000 naval uh, troops and built about 5,000 ships trying to choke out the city in terms of blockading the river. And even then, 
uh, every year between the six year siege in the summer month when the Han River would flood higher and create this kind of um, much more nav like, you know, easier way to sneak in to both cities. There would be naval forces from the Song Dynasty to come in and try to reinforce the city with troops and with supplies. Because ultimately, after the six year siege, essentials ran out. You could farm to a certain degree within the city and keep yourself alive, but things like salt, things like firewood, uh, things like clothes um, just ran out after six years. And the defending general, uh, Lu Wenhuan, uh, who's quite a famous general um, in the later period of Song Dynasty, uh, eventually decided to surrender. Uh, there was a lot of political reasons as well. Uh, there was a prime minister in the Song Dynasty who have been trying to create a rift between him and the emperor, uh, creating a lot of distrust between his clan and the imperial clan in the Song Dynasty of late. And the Mongols offered him very lucrative surrender terms. Uh, so after the city completely ran out of supplies and after defending the city for six years, uh, he did surrender. And then he became one of the leading Mongol generals uh, to assault uh, the rest of China. Uh, this is not strange. Uh, most of the officers that were participating in this siege to begin with are surrendered Chinese generals. Um, a lot of the forces have surrendered to the Mongols at this point. Uh, they are a very dominant power after wiping out the Jin dynasty uh, in our earlier campaigns. And um, the leader of the Mongol force obviously would be a Mongolian general. His name is, um, I think in English is Aju, uh, or in Chinese I think he's called Ashu. He's the grandson of Su Butai, who led the European campaigns, uh, which I understand. It's a Western campaign. I said Eastern because they happened in Eastern Europe. Depends on the perspective. Um, but yeah, Su Butai is long dead. We jumped 26 years into the future. His grandson is now leading the force. Uh, even the Khan has changed. Kubla Khan is now the leader of the Mongols. He is also a grandson of Genghis Khan, so he will be Batu's cousin, but he belongs to the fourth son's line, uh, Tuole's line. Uh, Tuole never became a great Khan himself, but his oldest son, Munker, who led the siege of Kiev, uh, eventually did become a great Khan, and uh, Munker also tried to siege Xiangyang much earlier, uh, did not work, uh, so he decided to bypass Xiangyang. He went for Sichuan, uh, where uh, the Shu kingdom used to be, and he died there, uh, sieging a mountain city. And that caused a great rift within the Mongol force for a few years, uh, quite a few civil wars, until his younger brother Kublai Khan was able to consolidate his claim. Uh, basically, he had to fight off, I think he was the fifth son in the line. His older brother died, his oldest brother died. He takes over, I think the seventh youngest brother tried to oppose him, and they fought a four year long civil war before Kulak was able to consolidate his power, and then he turned his attention to the rest of China. Uh, he would eventually destroy the Song Dynasty, the Southern Song Dynasty, and create the Yuan Dynasty. He is considered the founder of the Yuan Dynasty. And, um, you know, strategically, if you're attacking from the north down into China, there's basically three routes. You can go west into uh, Sichuan, but the problem would be you have a very long supply line of delivering food into the mountain regions or getting past the mountain regions to get food uh, into the plateau. And the eastern route, which uh, seems the most accessible, has other issues. Uh, there is a big delta plain in the Huainan region. A lot of small rivers branching out uh, in between the Yellow River and um, the Yangtze River, which is why the Grand Canal is built there, because you can connect all those small rivers uh, between these two mighty river systems. And because there's such a delta there with branching rivers, it's very difficult for cavalry to fight uh, in this sort of floodplain region. So the Mongols picked the center place, which really makes a lot of sense, because after Xiangyang falls, the Song pretty much is doomed. Uh, you end up basically having your center region getting choked out and then the river become accessible uh, to the Mongol forces to go south and the six years spent training the navy really did pay off in the end as the naval force is going to assist them in taking the rest of Song. So let's start our siege. Uh, this siege is a very long one so I 
I'm wondering what our first step here is. Build a base around it? Because they need to, to build uh, multiple fortresses to cut off the land route. They needed to build multiple shipyards to build ships. And in the end, um, they had to fight off basically reinforcement armies one after another that tried to come save Xiangyang during the six years because uh, everyone knew this was a crucial city. And um, let's see what we do. After a stunning victory over the Hungarian king at the Battle of Mohi, the Mongols seemed unstoppable. But a year later, the great Khan Ogade died. The Mongols pulled out of Europe and returned home. Over the next 20 years, two more great Khans ascended to the throne. Their conquests continued to expand the empire in the east. Then in 1260, the grandson of Genghis became the next great Khan. His name was Kublai Khan. He would rock the foundations of one of the medieval world's most advanced civilizations, China. This is Shangdu. Remember today as Xanadu, it was once Kublai Khan's great northern capital. From here, he jealously eyed the wealth of southern China's Song Dynasty. He wanted to take it and become emperor of all China. The Song Dynasty had ruled over southern China for more than 300 years and the country was prosperous and well-governed. Kublai Khan knew that the key to victory was capturing a strategic city lying far to the south of Shangdu. It was called Changyong. Changyong was the gateway to the south and the heart of the Song Dynasty's power. Controlling the Han River, a critical access route to cities further along the Yangtze. Capturing Shangyong was Kublai Khan's only hope of becoming emperor of all China. The Mongol horde had to take the city at all costs. Alrighty, eager in his quest to become the emperor of China, Kublai Khan sent his army to seize the richest cities of the Song Dynasty. Sitting either side of the Han River, the twin fortresses of Xiangyang and Fancheng braced for a direct assault. So I'm assuming this is the setup, and I'm assuming it's actually kind of weird how they name these battles. Uh, this one being called the fortress and that one being called Xiangyang because in 1273, Xiangyang did surrender, but um, Xiangyang's surrender occurred after Fan Cheng fell. Uh, Fan Cheng actually fell. Um, Kublai Khan brought in a pair of Muslim engineers, uh, which built him some very powerful counterweight tribuchets. Uh, the Chinese called them Hui Hui Pao, or Hui Hui, uh, Hui is how Chinese call Muslims, uh, just Hui Hui Pao is a cannon or uh, some sort of you know powerful siege weapon, and Hui Hui Pao was used to bring down uh, sort of defenses and demoralize Fan Cheng. Fan Cheng fell, uh, it was raised down to the ground, uh, everyone inside was killed, um, which is pretty typical of Mongolian forces, especially after spending six years sieging one city, which is like unheard of. Uh, they trained enough naval marine forces to have divers uh, that uh, destroyed the platoon bridge between the two cities as well. And that's really when hope for Xiangyang kind of dimmed because they lost control of the river. They lost control of their sister city. Uh, they basically would have to, they basically would starve out to death. There's no more reinforcements. 
but let's see how we play this one out. Alrighty, like quite Han, a big force. Not content with rule over his own lands, coveted the riches of the Song Dynasty to the south. He ordered his army to the twin cities of Fancheng and Shangyang, confident in his tried and tested tactics. All right, let's get the Although melee Kublai's boys. The ultimate target was the fortress of Chongyang. The Mongols would first have to control its sister city of Fancheng. All right, there's a road, and you know, where there's a road, we'll call them three. Have them search first. We'll scout around first, no rush. Ah, market. Okay. No enemies, really, but we'll take care of this. So I'm guessing we'll eventually be building stuff, considering there's a market to trade with. But right now, I guess we'll burn everything down, get resources. to follow the road. I think that's a crossing right here. Patch of grass. Okay, there's treasures. Wood. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We can ambush that. No range? Kill them! Ooh, towers. Do we have to assault that? I guess so. Both roads lead to this. But there's another road here. Ooh, another village. Yellow. So neutral? Okay. There's food. The road goes deeper. Alright, more treasure. Oh, we had to wait till they cut open the trees. Oh, they have a purpose. They're here to open up this road for us in the future. Okay, I guess right now we're forced to go this way. Okay, hard assault it is. No other way around it. Unless there's a path. Nope. Let's go. Charge. Open it. Mongols cleared the bridge of we lost two units. Not too bad. Continued their advance in Fancheng. We'll burn everything down. Get resources for it. Ooh, another scout. That's a treasure right there. Hold on. There's another forest path. We go across here. There's a crossing too. Hold on, what's over here though? Ooh. Can't destroy that. There's a garrison at the bridge. We're gonna go maybe around the bridge? Right. Ah, 
Haha, <laughs> yeah, that's a silly defense now. Um, let's see, how do we want to do this? Get everyone close. Guess we'll just brute force this. It's all archers. The spearmen are inside. So we just want to rush them down. And not get shot by those. Oh, you guys need to keep going. Ar archers. A small division of you get on the bridge. Two keep moving in. Pull them back. Two kite them out. And then one rush them. Two kite back. I thought there was another group of archers over here. Did they join the fight already, or did I miss them? Maybe they joined the fight already. Oh, we lost three more units. Oh, maybe that's the group of archers. Hold on, back off a little. And let the ones charge. And then two can flank. Go, 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 go! That's a merchant that's gonna drop supplies for us. Go, 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 go. Go him! Ah, troops. Oh, quite a bit of troops. Oh, that's quite a lot of troops. No, 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 no. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot of roadblocks. I was hoping to loop around them. Throw the spear, hide away from the spear. Ah, uh, towers. Oh, we got reinforcements. Okay, hold on. The Mongols called in their reinforcements. Nice! Together, the two detachments would strike the camp from both sides, pincering the song. Okay, no one's defending that charge. I'll call you guys just one now. And yeah, we'll just do both sides, that way it's a little bit more efficient. We're gonna lose a lot of men, but it's okay. I feel like there's no other way around this. Kill these, kill these. Hold on, group up first. Kill that thing. There we go. Unit to be healed by monks? Oh. We can heal. Nice. Let's burn everything first. Get money for it. That looks like treasures on the road as well. Do we have scouts that survive? Yeah, let me use you. Grab that. Ooh. With the song camp destroyed. Why are all of them the four? Set in motion their plan to seize Only the your city. four, is that okay? First, there we go. With an allied force at the gates of Fancheng. This assault force would attack force. the gates of Fancheng, while the Mongol vanguard would defend the siege weapons firing upon the cities. Okay, we no rush to do that. Let's bring. Let's call all you guys one. Bring you to the monks to heal. He's just here exploring. He's a scout after all. Check out this road. I know there's one more chest here. 
Ah, here comes the monks. Yeah, heal all of us, please. Oh, dangerous. I need you guys. Not all of you guys are healed. Move them around a little. Alright, I'm gonna have to wait for the troops. He could come this way. Pick up this chest. How are we doing? Almost everyone. Okay, we're good. not a lot of resistance. I mean, regardless, there's going to be a good amount of money from the buildings. Oh, no one's garrisoned. Okay. And, uh, easy take. The scouts could have done this. No population here? Ah. Hold on. Kill that first in case they do have troops. All of them are one, and the scout just took all the other numbers, so I don't have to worry about that. Let's go meet up with uh, our supposed reinforcements. And the scouts can actually heal too. Go to the monk. Everyone. Actually, no, he's also part of one. Let's go. Are we gonna get reinforcements? I mean, I feel like this does open up a route later on with the way it's designed. Oh, he's full healed. Interesting. I thought he was injured earlier. Alright, we got exactly a hundred men. Scout's just like, I'm riding ahead. Oh, but we're meeting reinforcements. We should wait with everyone. It's a lot of men. Okay, we only get this many more. As the Allied force charged the gates, the Mongol vanguard moved to defend the siege weapons the Song attacks. Where are the Song attacks? I mean, they have troops. There's another road. Ooh, Song attacks, Song attacks. Go, go, go. Two this way. Are we just gonna take the city like this? As the Mongols approached, the song burned whoa, the bridge. Whoa, 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 whoa. Preventing a direct assault on the fortress. I see. The assault on Fancheng was met with a barrage of gunfire, forcing the Allied army to retreat. Okay, so they backed off. Repairing. They could also fix this bridge. Reinforcement the arrives in the Ooh. And under guard, the Mongols switched strategies and called on a large group of reinforcements to bring in their mobile camp. Okay. The Mongols would besiege the mighty twin cities. 
Besiege both city, move units to bridgehead. The Mongols rallied a force on the bridgehead. Ah, the Mongols 55 strategy each. was to hold the city's bridges so that no Song forces could escape and no reinforcements Let me could explore the rest. It feels like they all have destinations, so I'm gonna just let them walk to where they're supposed to go, apparently. Oh, there's a treasure there. Resources. Wait, is this a village? That looks like farms. Oh, we're getting attacked. Oh my god. Oh my god. Let's see what we have. A market. We know exactly where this trade is going. Barrack, stable, archery range. What, what are they doing? I mean, they took care of it, but and they can fix it. But what are they doing? All right, we got a small group of troops as well. So this, I guess, these three are supposed to build up a force for that location. First, let's get a trade going. I guess so. Pop them down. Yeah, they cut this open. Get this treasure now. And, oh, we can see they're moving into this bridgehead too. And then there's this bridgehead. And they're moving a couple of building stuff over here. Okay, so I see. These, these guys move fast. So I guess they can guard us. Oh, we get a landmark building too. Okay, I'm gonna call these... Oh, research time. We get more stables. We'll, we'll split the work. Put this a little bit outside so we can get the bonus and build units faster. Blacksmith for research. Alright, we'll take our time. I feel like the game's not gonna rush us. Is the stable done? It's a research I want you to do. Let me get all of this. So this is all the gold we're gonna spend. You three will be recruiting here. You three will be recruiting here. There's a population limit issue. How are we gonna get? We're gonna have to move a lot of this men over. Right. How many is here? We have 22 Mongol die. No, 67 Mongol dies. My bad. Troops, troops, troops. That means there's troops. They're not doing anything, huh? I'm gonna call them one. They're a little short, right? 52. That's fine. I'm gonna move this force over. Five, five, five. Since it's 55, it's a little bit easier to keep track in groups of five, I guess. We'll go with the diverse force. I don't think we're forced to move into the position. This is the only position we probably have to keep some troop around just because it's going to be pretty ugly here. Hmm. We're going to do the same thing. Actually, we don't want to over recruit here. Actually, we do. This is where people will die, actually. Should I use my stone for the rush? I don't know. Maybe not now. There's seven types of units. That's 35 men. Like, 
this is enough to just step on it and satisfy the condition here. So maybe we don't recruit here. Um, I guess we'll stick with them. You guys are now two. 72. Yeah, 200, right? So 67-ish at each location will be good. But I guess the southern one maybe can be a little bit less, just because... And the cavalrys are slow to recruit. That's 45 units here, plus the 5 they gave us. Not enough. Still 50-something. Okay. I guess we'll just alternate. Oh, we're out of resources? Oh, Q is full. <laughs> Trade is going on already. I guess we're not producing any resources. Blacksmith research going. All the research are going. Gosh, it's slow. Oh, they're coming again. Go, 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 go. Wait, did I not cue these? Yeah, this is the only place where it gets a little bit iffy. How big is this force now? 29 watts. Really bad. So this overproduction is going to be an issue unless they, we just keep losing men, then that's a different issue. You know, we should chill it here. Let them finish producing enough men. 20 more. I, I think we'll get there. I mean, we can produce 16 more, technically. We're gonna have to move someone over. Wait, only 65 now? No, 75. 75, 72. 72 is a little bit too much. You guys are here. So we'll keep the 68 all range here. Move a couple with them. Yeah, deliver them over. Sixty, that's enough. Sixty-seven, sixty, and the rest seven over seven six. Yeah, that's 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 gonna be fine. We just need to wait for this group to show up. Oh, they're taking this way. Okay, we'll meet here then. We reached our population cap already, but even the 49 plus the 12 is enough. So we're good. We are good. Let's get everyone stepped in together. Three. Not everyone. Three. 63. Come to the southern bridgehead. Step into the northern bridgehead. Oh, perfect timing. Right in time for attack. Securing the second bridgehead, the Mongols were one step closer to blocking off all the escapements. No, no, no. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. He almost died.
We're gonna queue up some production here. I feel like the, the fighting is gonna be the fierce here. On the last bridgehead. Yeah, and seeing that the Mongols were attempting to block the city's escape routes, the Song began planning a counterattack. Yes, where? Prepare for counterattack. This is the force I'm most worried about, right here. Three. This, I feel like we can kite things out. But if we do need numbers... We're gonna have to just basically queue up everywhere. Are they going to fix the bridge? Is that what they're going to do? Or else this feels very safe. Alright. Is it coming? The Song launched their counterattack on the Mongols holding the bridgeheads. Where? The Mongols had to hold the three bridgeheads against the Song attacks. Ah, uh, here it comes. Guess we just hold and we'll be okay. I don't need to charge up yet because then I'll get killed by other things like the towers. Ow, 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 towers hurt. Towers hurt. This is fine. This is fine. Another wave. Oh, they fixed the bridge. Also here. Ooh, it's gonna get spicy. Uh, we don't have help down here. These guys are not actually helping us. Alright, we don't want to fight too close to the bridge for obvious reasons. Are they coming? No. This one guy right here. He's gonna get killed by this tributaries. Three is where I'm most concerned about. Hey, you guys stay around here, man. It's a shared duty. Guys, 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 guys. Bridgehead, bridgehead, guys. Fine. We'll do this ourselves. Seems okay. Back off a little. See, this group is like staying with us. There's no help here. Oh my god, another group. Uh, and you guys stay around? Hi, hi, hi. Guys, 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 guys. Let them die first. They're not even fighting them. No. See, this is good. This is this is rough. Here comes a wave. I feel like I can almost like cancel all production elsewhere and just make sure the production in the south is happening. Cause like that's where I'm worried the most. Whereas we don't need as many men here. Oh. oh. We lost some cannons. Go, 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 go. No, do not get drawn into that fighting over there. Pull back. That's bad. That's bad. We're already under... Right, we're under the mount down here. We're also over-pursuing here. Microing is... Okay, okay, this is not good. How about you do me a favor? I just need some quick manpower update here. Do we actually hold on? Wow, okay. We finally overcame it. To stop an all-out Mongol assault on their walls, the Song destroyed the remaining bridges to the Twin Cities. Unable to advance, the fortress of Zhangyang remained locked to the Mongols.
But with a siege established, the Khan's cause was not yet lost. So began the six long years, six years long siege of Xiangyang. Alrighty, that was the intro. There is no documentary video here. We have the queens of the empire. The pre-empire life of Mongol woman was one of constant pearl, when prominent wives were prizes to be won or stolen. But when Genghis Khan united the Mongol nation, he transformed the position of woman from possessions to equals, a reflection of his belief in the spiritual balance between male and female. Yet yeah, Taoism had a big influence on him. Uh, he was pretty into the search for immortality and uh, got into Taoism later on in his life. His wives and daughters would rule the conquered territory as queens while their husbands and sons went away on campaign. Soon, almost the entire empire was ruled by Mongol queens. However, after Genghis Khan's death, it would be his own sons that would cause this delicate balance to topple. The position of women once again became uncertain as they were forced from power, violated, murdered, and chased into hiding, and so the Khaganates descended into rivalry. All right, no video uh, special for us here. We'll come back, and I'm pretty sure the next battle is going to be the actual Battle of Xiangyang. It feel it will feel very weird uh, to go from the start of the siege to something else, then back to the end of the siege. So I think we're going to be wrapping up our Mongol Empire campaign tomorrow. So see you guys then. Bye.